Initially, at first, I looked all around, but could not find the exact car I had been dreaming of. So I made the deliberate decision myself to build it on my own, Ferry Porsche. And with that in mind, I warmly welcome you all to a brand new and exciting episode of Simply Electric. This time, it's not about this gorgeous 911 Turbo S Cabriolet, but about the brand new Porsche Taycan. And we've indeed prepared something quite exceptional and thrilling for you today. We aim to compare somewhat of a facelift with the original model and thoroughly determine for you whether it genuinely makes sense to order the latest Porsche Taycan or if it might even be considerably more interesting to go for a nearly new used one, I'd say let's not beat around the bush. You double check if you're part of a driveway electric community. If not, please support us with a subscription. And now let's kick off with the brand new Porsche Taycan. Before we get started, I have a big favor to ask of you. We've launched an additional channel named Simply Electric because in collaboration with WAI, we now have the unique chance to translate my German content into English and in a way showcase our videos to a significantly broader and wider audience across the globe. Feel free to check out the video description. We'd be delighted if you could support us there with a subscription and who knows, you might even enjoy watching our videos in English too. Here at the Porsche Center in Dortmund, you have the unique opportunity to take an exclusive look at both derivatives. The incredibly advanced model care of the Porsche Taycan, now brand new, fresh at Porsche dealers, and of course the splendid Taycan, with many years of experience in what you might refer to as its original authentic configuration. But two very special cars, one of them being the latest Taycan Turbo model, and the other one previously owned by a quite young owner. Taycan Turbo S. We sometimes have the unique opportunity, when we can look at the new one, to also glance back at the old one to see how Porsche has intentionally and skillfully managed all the significant changes. And as always, we start from the outside, beginning at the front. Let's take a look at the front of the brand new Porsche Taycan. Here, in the turbo model, naturally also equipped with the turbo design package. And there's a unique feature, turbo need. That means, as you can see here with the Porsche crest, the gold is gone. And it's done in turbinite. I must say, I really, really like that. And this turbinite color, it fully and completely wraps around the entirety of the car itself. Here on the side skirt, you've got the turbinite again. The R curtains here, they've left out the tear troughs. We've also installed the new highly advanced digital HD lights. Naturally creating quite special and unique lighting conditions. And this, of course, is especially beneficial in the pitch dark and on the very bustling highway. What a turbo must have, of course, are also nice big rims. Right here in this dimension, which spans 21 inches, Stefan, we're looking at the 265-35R21, also once again concluding in a remarkable turbo finish. This means that you need to wrap the selected color around the vehicle surface accordingly to ensure a match. In the side skirts, once again, we find turbinate, just like in the side window trim present here at the very top of the windows. Then, I really have to say, it is actually a truly sleek design feature and it absolutely completely stands out from all the other vehicles. And that's what you want to achieve, isn't it? When you treat yourself to a Porsche Turbo as a Taycan, to set yourself apart a bit from the other base models, yes, the rear section is a real treat in my opinion. We've got here once again. The air conditioning outlets are very, very nice indeed. We've got a brand new rear bumper design, once again here with Turbo Nite in the specific color. Just like the turbo lettering, it's also turbo nitrogen indeed. And then, of course, you can have the rear taillights illuminated, at least optionally, so that the Porsche emblem can also be brightly lit up in a vivid red. It is all somewhat subject to an additional charge, and then you could very quickly exceed 200,000 euros in the configuration, you see. And I promised you we really want to take the Turbo S here for a thorough comparison, so to speak, to showcase its unparalleled capabilities. Here we present our jet black metallic offering with a sport design and carbon exterior package for those valuing aesthetics and performance. Keen on your perspectives, especially comparing its look to the bold turbo rivet color. It features sophisticated five spoke wheels in high gloss black, enhancing visual appeal. High performance is highlighted by ceramic brakes with yellow calipers and large drilled discs, showcasing our engineering excellence and dedication to designs that blend functionality with beauty, redefining luxury automotive design standards. Yes, when Carbonara is included, it's done right. They skip the exterior mirror, but at least it's installed on the side skirts. Right here, for detailed comparison, we have the sleek, glossy black side window trim. So, as you can see, from the side, it's small individual details that have been changed. And especially when we look at the rear section, I'm really eager to hear what you think. 
Except for these particular air vents, I believe truly there is not much of a distinction to be noted at all. Sure, you don't get the illuminated Porsche lettering here, but down here, we've also nicely incorporated some carbon fiber into the rear diffuser, subtly installed. So, I must tell you, Stefan, I couldn't even make up my mind. The new Turbo, or let's say the Taycan Turbo S from a previous young owner. What do you say? Um, tough call, but new is always better. I'd say, let's take another look at the interiors, shall we? Yes, you know our motto, the connoisseur knows. The connoisseur knows, yes. You can, of course, also distinguish the newer model from its predecessor by the key, obviously. Feel free to leave a comment on how you can clearly deduce by closely examining the key. Stefan and I are still musing over what our new electric car could be. And then we were talking about the Taycan 2, you know, how people mention that low entry, the low exit. I'm not sure if that's so great for us, given our age, being over 40, um, you know. And then I thought, well, how can I even better convince Stefan about the new Taycan by merely showing him, in a more detailed manner, the new advanced suspension system. Approach, carefully open up the Taycan's shiny door. Observe as the innovative, sleek and advanced vehicle elevates gracefully, then slowly, smoothly lowers back down to its original position, perfectly ready for an unforgettable, exhilarating and thrilling ride. The Porsche Active Suspension Management System is priced at a good 8,000 euros more and can clearly do significantly more than merely swiftly raise and lower the suspension for facilitating a comfortable entry and exit process. By the way, you can repeat this as often as you like. Porsche has installed a brilliant technology allowing you to repeatedly lock and unlock the car and it always retains this power. To do so accordingly, which fundamentally ensures you essentially stick to the road much like a very strong magnet would. This means you have virtually no swaying motion. At times, it even lifts the vehicle to place it better and more dynamically into the turns. So I would say when you're spending a lot of money, like a Porsche Turbo starts from well over 175,000 euros, the base model from 101,000 euros and some change, then of course you might very well consider whether you indulge in that kind of fancy stuff or that super hot, irresistibly tempting shit, right? If it is really worth it, every person must decide. Right. So if I go for the Taycan, you're handling that so we can comfortably get into one, right? Absolutely. The dimensions in terms of length, width and height have essentially remained the same. It's still 4.96 meters long and the details are really in the technology. This means both in terms of power, giving you even more performance, even more acceleration and so on. You'll receive, but essentially also in efficiency, Porsche has stated we are striving to accomplish both, significantly enhance the performance and simultaneously lower the energy consumption and have successfully topped it off with two innovative new battery packs. Of course, with the turbo, you always get the large battery pack. 105 kilowatts gross, 97 kilowatts usable and the base is always 83 kilowatts net in any case so that you definitely get a significantly more extensive range just from the new battery sizes alone. And whether it has truly become more efficient, that's something we of course want to test during our consumption drive and the charging check as well. And of course the third and notably significant alteration, very importantly, is the notably upgraded speed of charging. A Porsche must be able to charge quickly. That was the case from the start. It managed to charge its 83 kilowatt net, which effectively was the performance battery from 10 to 80% in under 23 minutes, with I believe up to 270, 275 kilodollars peak at the respective charging stations. And the brand new Porsche Taycan, it truly takes it up a significant notch, pushing the boundaries. And it achieves up to 320 kilodollars momentarily at peak and manages to charge the large battery, 97 kilowatt hours net, from 10 to 80% in under 18 minutes. I believe even from 5 to 80%. So it really is about high performance because of course the Porsche customer wants not just performance while driving, but also performance while charging. However, there is a downside, let's be honest. With the new Porsche Taycan, you're currently limited to three phase AC 11 kilowatt of charging. Whereas with the previous model, you had the choice to charge at 22 kilo of AC. And that's obviously mega, mega cool because with the old model, you could charge it from zero to 100% at home with the wall box in just four hours. Um, with the new model, you'd be looking at something around more like approximately 10 hours. To round off everything for those who might not have seen our Porsche Taycan videos as of yet, we naturally want to take a much closer look. But it somehow, I think, doesn't have the sensor controlled opening. 
It's really fortunate that I can accurately identify this particular car. Thus, we now have the perfect opportunity to present to you the remarkably spacious frunk, where a sizable travel suitcase, one that also easily qualifies as carry-on luggage for most airlines when flying, is beautifully lined with high-quality plush carpeting and such, as one might expect from a Porsche. Here's again the cargo triangle, first aid kit, onboard tools neatly stored, and here you also get the full charging equipment, of course, when you're headed on a big trip with the Porsche Taycan, and I, I must say this turbo knit, um, well, the turbo knit, uh, I do find it quite sleek. So incredibly cool. A fascinating turbo in fact. The sensor control was just disabled simply because the car is currently on display right here at the Porsche Center in Dortmund. And of course, you want to prioritize safety first, and so it was essentially disabled. That's why the foot control doesn't work, and also the hand control at the front trunk doesn't work either. For that, we have the little button to then also open the trunk accordingly. And as you might very well observe, not that much has actually really changed with the trunk either. But that's absolutely perfectly all right, fine, because I genuinely and truly believe all of those individuals who are currently driving a Porsche Taycan now have, so to speak, with their innovative front and rear storage compartments, nearly 600 liters of usable trunk space. And that's incredibly spacious. And then, of course, you have the option to fold down the rear seat in a 40-20-40 split, especially if you're planning to go skiing or if you need to carry some long items. It's absolutely super, super practical and convenient. And what opens electrically, Stefan? Closes electrically, too. Yeah, true. Astonishing. Naturally, the spoiled clientele from Zufenhausen is accustomed to something special in a sleek car, right, Stefan? Soft close. Exactly. That's been a feature of the Panamera for years, and now, thank heavens, it's finally made its way into the new Porsche Taycan. Not only does the active ride suspension lift up, but also, if you see, you just need to lean the door close, and then it pulls itself shut with soft close. That is, of course, most likely correct on the famous Königsallee. One very sought-after detail in our inquiry, do you perhaps smell precisely what I am currently smelling? Ah, <sighs> no. Yes, do you recall my 911? It precisely mm. shared the very same call. There's oh, just something the uniquely beautiful about the experience of getting into a brand new car. The car has now 32 kilometers. It's been freshly delivered here. It's just, it has something, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. I also can't wait for us to finally get a new electric car. Yes, then it's truly time to move forward. Let's continue with the Taycan. Of course, we've kept the gorgeously curved display, but now with enhanced new graphics and innovative new software, with more powerful new processors, with faster speeds, and a much more comprehensive digital experience than we might have had with its predecessor. But let's stay chronological. You might recall those equipment options on the old Neurodyne, which featured a somewhat distinctive gold metallic appearance. What I actually found quite hip, but then after looking at it for a while, it also seemed a bit too much, right? Yes, absolutely. How unbelievably cool and totally classy does Turbinet look, right? Yeah, that's really awesome. So I can see the air vents there, the casing, wow. So, just looking at this beautiful steering wheel in GT design with turbo stitches, the seams in turbo stitches. Here, full leather package in turbo stitches. Full leather is, I believe, standard on the turbo. Then again, turbo stitches here too. All turbo stitches on the cup holder. And there, I must say, this is something Porsche really excels at. Building cars for years, top level, highest quality, gap dimensions accurate at the seams on the sheet metal outside. So. This is really, really top-notch. The only thing you really shouldn't do with the active rise oh, suspension is stand on the brake because then it kind of gets a bit blocked when going up and then going down. Yeah, other than that, really, you can clearly see it here with the new innovative button. Of course, the new Taycan is recognizable by that too. Visually, it's been spruced up a bit and of course has all the functions. Wireless, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and it's supposed to be open so that over time, more apps can be integrated into the vehicle, allowing for the continued use of entertainment functions. Optionally, there's also the passenger display, which it has, but I can't see. Stefan can show you if he moves the camera more right. This it should actually be on. I can't see it because, and this is really cool now, a special film is installed on it because the driver theoretically can't watch movies while driving. But Stefan, as the co-driver, could watch it if I weren't being driven. Exactly, that's always what you prefer. It's always been that way with us. Yes, exactly. Yes, besides, we've got this beautiful race tech sky where others might say Alcantara. Porsche affectionately calls it race techs. 
I think that this option is indeed also optional, then there is one more additional thing. And I really have to say, it goes all the way to the high quality Burmeister sound system, which genuinely blasts everything away with its power. We are about to demonstrate that particular thing to you once again, now in turbo mode. That's kind of, I think that's gonna be our favorite word today. That could also be our car here, actually. Yeah, who knows, but do you know how much it costs? We have a lot to save up for, as it is right here, 220. Oh, wow, 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 wow. That hurts. And here we go again. But isn't it awesome, Burmeister? Look at this. Nah. It's just nice and clean, nice and clear. Now the highs, the mids, the bases. Yeah, it truly does look really great. Oh yes, indeed, and believe me, it is worth every single euro. Worth every euro? I'm so glad I went with my 911 ho Hohemester. Hear that? Yeah. And for a more detailed comparison, here's the basic model, the Turbo S, presented as a relatively young, gently used, pre-owned vehicle, so to speak. And honestly, I really have to tell you, of course, not that much has genuinely changed here at all, you know? You can see this again with the colorful tiles. Here you also have, of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto included. You have the passenger display on board. But here, for instance, it's not this. A special film has been carefully applied so that I can essentially make out the passenger display quite accordingly. I'm quite curious about your opinion. Do we really need a passenger display? Is it worth it? Would you take a look at it? It does cost, I believe, quite a pretty penny more. Or do you say, no, it's really just a gimmick and truthfully, we actually use it quite rarely. So we finally concluded, Stefan, what's next? The new or the old one? The brand new one is always better. The new one comes to a smooth 220K as it currently stands. And the used vehicle model hasn't been priced yet because it arrived so extremely freshly during our photo shoot, we still don't quite know its exact cost. But in any case, I would guess significantly cheaper. And that's probably this consideration for you. If you're interested in a Taycan, you're essentially paying for the newest hot tech then investing the good money or perhaps do you say hey maybe i don't actually need all of those high-end features and decide to go for the solid tech with a fair pre-owned option or the porsche dealer of your choice given there are more than 90 of them makes you of course such an enticing offer for this one or for that to take the decision off your hands in any case i can only recommend you visit one of the over 90 porsche centers of your choice take a look at both Taycan models i believe you'll find a very very interesting electric car there which certainly also has an interesting price. And when you decide to opt for such a price range, I truly believe, then you also have to make the very tough choice yourself. And with that, we've reached the end of today's video. We've tried out a completely new format again with Oli Compares. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Feel free to check if you're part of the Simple Electric Communication. If not, we'd love your support with a subscription. That way, you won't miss out on all the new videos. Reviews, driving reports, consumption runs with the brand new Porsche Taycan. I thank you all for watching. Stay healthy and see you soon. Yours truly, Ollie. Hey there, Stefan. Well then, what do you think about this vision? A Porsche splendidly illuminated in red. It's kind of the latest hot stuff, right? But do you think it's more Maximilianstrasse than Königsallee, huh? More Maximilianstrasse, definitely. Maxim, Maxim. Now that Bayern's in the semifinals, Champions League, you know? Maximilian Street, Max Street.